everybody. This podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsRevealease.com. CardsRevealease.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choco Bros. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week, uh, we had our local qualifiers begin this past weekend. Uh, so before we begin going through the winners, uh, guys, what did you think of the kits that came with them? Sam, I'll start with you. So I could be wrong, but I believe that they get a whole bunch of promos, including Laswell. Uh, most importantly to me, the A03. And I believe that that's actually packaged with the Ruban. I could be wrong. Um, Wait, everybody but, gets them, not just first place? No, no, no. First and second place get them. Oh, okay, gotcha. gotcha. Um, and the new mat, which is pretty cool. They added, like, the crystals to it. Um, and most importantly to me, um, well, maybe equally importantly, is that the Wave 2 and or 2 and 3 are going to get the Zidane, the Road to World Championships. Um, and that is pretty exciting and also, like, a pretty good incentive to travel, um, even for once you've already qualified for it does make blocking interesting because you, you know, that Zidane, we don't know how much it could be worth. It could be worth between $30 would be my guess to $280. You really don't know. Um, so you're just not going to scoop an LQ when, when, when the price for that is a, a Zidane and a zero three and a Ruban, as well as a sweet, tr- a really sweet trophy and a play mat. Even if you're already qualified, you're going to play it out. So, um, so that's, that that's actually their strategy then, right? It's just to make sure nobody, uh, does that this year? They're like, nah, we're gonna incentivize it too much against Maybe. it. Maybe. <laughs> it's a good it's a good strategy. Um I hope that and I believe that LQ invites passed down, is that correct? Yeah. So second yeah. place would get it. Sure. Um so I guess theoretically if you don't have it, you should have earned it. That's a really like shitty way to try to tell your friend that, but like also are you are you just <laughs> we, we say that to each other all the time. Are you, so. Right. Are you just gonna <laughs> scoop three hundred dollars in prize into your friend because you want them to be able to qualify for Nats and that's a if that's they, a lot if, of money. If they hand it to you afterwards, right? And they might, but like <laughs> who do you trust more to who do you trust more to win the thing? You or them. Like never them. I don't care who it is. <laughs> like it could be JFB playing. I'd be like, nah man, I, I got this. <laughs> like you know, like you just trust yourself playing so much that like you can't be like, well, and also it's just shady if you say something like that. You can't, certainly you can't say that. Um, if you give me everything, I'll concede to you. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, what's the what's the term for that? Uh, collusion, Bribery. Right? Collusion. <laughs> Isn't it collusion or something? Or is it's, that only if it's your opponent that's going gonna... to... If your opponent, it would be collusion. Right? I don't know. It's also bribery if it's your opponent. Who knows? I... I I, I don't know. It's not like I'm an English. It's major. not good. <laughs> Are we talking about if you're in the finals with that person, or if you're like? Well, no. So let's let's say let's say you're, you're in, top in four. the top, top four, four okay. and you're like you're playing as your friend. And you're like, I really want to win this. I feel like I can take it all the way, but you're already qualified. Can you say I? I well, first of all, I know that you can't. But I'm saying the theory, the, the situation is, I'm gonna give you everything. I, I want you to give me everything you win from this, but you can keep the qualification, and I'll concede. And there's I mean, a you. <laughs> there's a gambit. Yeah, I, I don't think that I don't think that that's gonna happen. I think that everyone and, playing should be playing for themselves. If you're legitimately going for the purpose of blocking for someone, I could see that. But like, if you're a collector like me and you need that third of the name, like, move, bitch, get out of the way. Hit the road, Zach. Oh, like actual Zach. That's 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 that's, that's the joke. I know. I know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so outside of the kits, um, we saw a lot of people that we know participating in some of these local qualifiers. Yes. Uh, we, we saw shout out, Aaron. shout out to Aaron Wiseman. Yeah, yeah we, he we took it down Aaron. with uh, JFB's list, except plus one backup because we know 15's wrong. So you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been playing. I've been playing 15 and 16. They feel exactly the same to no, me. No, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> but 18 uh, feels about the same. <laughs> Uh, but outside of that, we had the West Virginia LQ, which Tim Bridges won with Fire Ice. Yep. So Fire uh, Ice winning lots of events this weekend. Yeah, Fire Ice and Wind Earth seem to be on top. Yep. Um, outside of that, uh, we also had Lawrence Oliva. He won the Atlanta one with Wind Water. Old Faithful for him. And that was the one you guys were considering attending, correct? That was the one I was considering attending. Okay. <laughs> For the love of God, I could not I get a single to. other person to go with me. I tried so hard to. <laughs> like, every group chat I'm in, I wanted to go to that so bad. But I'm, ha- I'm happy that Lawrence won it. 
Yeah, I'm okay. glad to see him get qualified uh, early again because that will sure. give him much better opportunity to make it to Nationals this year. Hope to see him there. Well, I mean, what do you mean by giving him best opportunity? He's well, he had, he's he's there now. No, no, no right, because uh, last year he had pr- trouble with scheduling uh, yeah. because of like gotcha. family stuff. So now, okay, because gotcha, he's gotcha. qualified now, he has a lot of time to plan it and make sure it works fair out enough. this year. Very fair, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so outside of that, we had the Water Cup in Portland this weekend, hosted by Epic Game. Um, what did you guys think of the stream? Zach, I'll start with you. Uh, so I caught parts of it. I couldn't watch the whole thing. Um, but from what I saw, uh, it was it was all right. But I definitely like was the whole first day without commentators, or was or was it only part of day one, or how did that work? I didn't see all of it. I, I, I believe they had some commentators in the background, uh, the guys who usually commentate for the stream. It was it was a little weird to have the players talking. It was interesting and like it, it's kind of a nice perspective sometimes. But I liked it. Yeah, I like that. I mean, I like that part of it for sure. But uh, I don't know how I feel. I'm kind of on the fence about it. Uh, but then day two, that was all commentated, correct? And then right. they brought in players. It looked like uh, you had Rice and, and Berkeley for the second part for day yeah, two. Yeah, so people who did they not make top sixteen? Is that why they were on it, or were they? Did they go there specifically to commentate? Uh, they did not make top 32. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Um, yeah, I mean, it was, from what I saw, it was good. Um, I know there were some people complaining there were slow moments because there was a lot of water, but, I mean, that's just, you know, that's how it is sometimes. Yeah. Uh, what about you guys who maybe got to watch more than I did? Um, I thought that the start of the stream was really unfortunate. Um, right, I'm sorry. Actually, I need to add one thing. Pauses were extremely long. <laughs> there, that, and that's what it was. Day, people... day one was just not that great, but they they made some improvements, and it's their first event streaming. Um, like what? not, no, I mean they stream all the time, but it's their like, first. They, they stream three times event. a week. <laughs> they do, they do, and in in between those rounds, oftentimes they get um, the the locals to play friendlies against each other. Like, honest to God, though, like, if you're here, it's a whole different situation. Like, you don't want to play a friendly against your opponent. First off, that game wasn't that friendly, I'm sure. Like, it was an opponent. Your guys are battling for top cut. Yes, it's supposed to be fun, but it it just simply was nowhere near as relaxed as a normal local. So it's not a friendly match. And if you replay it, more people are seeing what you're playing. More people are starting to hover over the, the coverage area. Well, they should get it, people that aren't in that position, right? Like, either... They should people who are outside the tournament maybe watching and doing side events or something they're not in the event or they dropped or i mean obviously that's not wrong i mean but but yeah but employees or something care about that so it's good for new players better than a blank stream i agree i agree with you but but the but i don't know i feel like the stream should be catered toward yeah i agree i guess i guess i agree with you because i think the stream should be catered toward new players um because players like myself will probably watch despite staring through like even if it's just like randoms that we don't care about will probably watch it anyway but i didn't watch a lot of day one because it was just every time i tuned in it was it was like we'll be right back yeah, um yeah. that being said they had i think plays, that they, which was nice. yeah i think that they did a good job um for the rest of the time and um yeah and, and the replays were nice too there were some the, times though the they didn't update the information like, though right like where it was one, like saying it was round three and it was round six or something i don't, i don't remember but i think i think that the biggest thing that i would change but well, first off i'm going over the things that i would change first oh my overall impression of the stream is that they did a very good job um but i would have changed also that they, i think they did similar to what rva did where they just put like basically the table ones and two and so like you saw a lot of the same people am i incorrect or was that just really random that that happened to me when i tuned in like every time i tuned in it felt like it was very near the top um which it should be near the top but there's a whole wide variety like especially like, like, for example round three Table 12 is just doing just as good as table one, and they're not any different. So try to switch up the players a little bit more. Um, but overall, especially day two, um, I thought it was well run. I would be excited if they if they said Epic Games was streaming uh, an event. I would be excited be- because they did they grew so much, even in just from day one to day two, was such a, a huge change that like I think that given a day three, they might even do it perfectly. I don't I mean. That's hard to say, but I think I'd be excited to see them stream in the future. 
Um, even more so that they're really responsive to the stream. If you comment in the stream and you say that there's an issue, like, hey, it sounds not high enough, or there's feedback, or the music's too loud, whatever you comment, they will respond back to you and fix the issue right away. So that part to me was pretty impressive. Yeah, I only got to see um, part of day two, uh, more towards the end of it. Um, but from what I saw, it was very professional stream. Obviously, like high quality, which their weekly locals are always like very good camera quality, good commentary, all that stuff. Um, so what about the deck list? Um, what did you guys think of some of the top deck list? Um, obviously, the top four. Um, so we'll start with uh, Chris Neal's deck. Chris Neal's deck um, was the Ice Fire like six deck. Um, at the beginning of the format, I thought the deck was really good. Um, it started to falter a little bit as people kind of exploited his weakness. Um, but obviously, you know, Chris played this in the Octagon Open. Uh, he's been playing it for a while. Um, he's made some changes like uh, Lice, um, Three Drop, Celeste is something that he's been playing for a while. And it just makes the his Phoenix much stronger than most people's Phoenixes. So I, I really like his list a lot. And I like that it's not relying on like the three Duncans that the earlier versions were playing. Um, obviously winning is hard to say oh well, that deck's good but yeah I mean obviously that deck's good um, Nathan Perez's list uh, had some interesting choices uh, the Aladai for example um, this is very much a Nathan Perez list like <laughs> Ice, Wind, Discard um, and I don't think anyone's ex surprised that he played this deck um, I don't think anyone else is surprised he came in second. It's, it's like, <laughs> Nathan is the end boss. You know, in order to beat the game, you must beat Nathan. Um, yeah, actually, in regards to his deck, I was working on an Ice Wind list, and I was like, oh, I think Nathan Perez will be at the Crystal Cup this weekend, so I'll just wait and see what his looks like. <laughs> there you go. Now you have a great a great list. Um, Nathan, Nathan Perez is just the end boss, and I say that with, with all dear like sincerity. I love Nathan. He's a cool dude. I got to play against him, and he crushed me um with a ice uh wind deck at um the fanfare but it's just it's sad that he's always in second but it's also a pretty good place to be i mean he's always making worlds um which is a dope place to be you know like if i could never win nationals would always come in second i'd take that trade right like a free flight to nationals <laughs> every year like seems pretty good um his deck is really cool and it's probably really annoying um and it did knock out the first seed um 2-0 so that game was incredibly fun and cool to watch. Um, so definitely check out that game if you haven't. Who is that um, first seed? Uh, Jonathan Smith, I believe, playing the Immortality Ar uh, Arden deck. Um, went undefeated, and then he, I, I'm not gonna say Nathan crushed him, but like beat him game one. Uh, did what Ice Wind's trying to do. Game two is incredibly back and forth. It was one of the best games I've ever watched. Um, Wait, who was that player? I'm sorry. Jonathan Smith. I, I don't see them on the top list. He would be in, not on the top list. Yeah, he would be in top 32. He wouldn't be on the FFDX list. Yeah. But yeah oh, the last... day two is third. That's right. They only reported 16. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, so... the last, last few turns were very back and forth. I know yep. that was the one that ended with like the Genesis on Arden, I believe. Or Genesis on Wall. It was ge yeah, on yeah. It was Genesis on Wall, but like him not, him, not hitting a Chaos Walker, like not knowing that he actually had another wall in hand was like mm -hmm. so sick. And then Jonathan just needing to rip a top deck rips the perfect top deck. And then Nathan the following turn rips the exactly the perfect top deck for that. Um, yeah. It was just actually just insane. Like nobody out top decks, Nathan, right? Like, <laughs> like they're like, Oh my God, this is something that Nathan normally does. This is crazy. It was a top. It wasn't a top. Deck. It was a, well, I guess it was, it was technically it was a Titan. It was the yeah. Titan. If he hits the Titan into, um, into damage it completely like changes the game into uh give him a swing back favor and then nathan just rips the genesis and it's like nah game's over <laughs> so it was actually just like see it was it was just such an entertaining game to watch um third place um come in with uh, the the deck uh milo played i'm excited i mean like you guys know or if you don't know like my second or third favorite card behind fasoya maybe third because nox is my second favorite is gold best like i love that card um, uh, I don't normally play the no backup versions. I definitely prefer like the the water lightning versions mm. that play like Banfrit. Um, well, I guess this is water lightning, but <laughs> yeah, right. Well, here you go. Normally, yeah. they have like Artemisian and stuff, um, <laughs> and five drop Yuna. This deck is really cool. Um, I like that he went for the full Gilgamesh package. Um, you know, if there was uh, another three Gilgamesh, I think he'd be playing eighteen Gilgamesh. Um, 
it's consistent. It does what it does, and it did what it did really well, obviously, because you know, getting third place is no slouch in, in this cup. And then you have Jeff Curran's uh, Earth Wind deck, which at first seems kind of like a stereotypical deck. It is playing what a lot of players were playing this weekend with the Riku Splash to handle probably what I imagine mm. is the Mono Water matchup. Um, and then it has White Mage handling the backups, Maria to get over uh, the Mirror match, which is really important. And then Altamesia is probably the biggest inclusion. Um, yeah, I just saw that. And it, it's over what, like, GFB was playing Dark Finna in that spot, for example. Um, I wonder what our Altamesia handles that Dark Finna doesn't, and the reason that... Uh, yeah, Altamesia handles that... Um, sorry, that, uh, like, Dark Finna doesn't. Um, well, he doesn't have Phoenix Dark... on the list, right? Correct. But there's probably a reason for that and i'm and i'm wondering i kind of want to pick his brain a little bit and kind of see what his thoughts were behind it but apparently ultimacia was uh mvp in a very good card and i definitely could see that i mean the card is nuts um i'd like to see like a carbuncle in this list i think if i were to change anything uh it's great with noctis just all uh um, and great with ultimacia uh, maybe that's not enough but the, the the top four decks were pretty cool um, I was going to make a comment I, about uh, Chris Neal's deck, that I realized the same comment for Nathan Prez's is their inclusion of the Opus 5 Legend Emperor uh, that when it enters the field, you know, you can make your opponent discard by paying extra. But whenever your opponent draws a card outside of their draw phase, you get to dull and freeze a forward of theirs. So that's, you know, Layla Viking, if you, they're Viking when it enters, dull and freeze something. When it dies, dull and freeze something. Uh, that's a very it's a tech card i've played before it's never done too much work for me but i really like the op, uh, that option um what other decks is that really good against that i'm forgetting i'm assuming layak lists uh could be a thing so after you reactivate it's, they draw it's fine against uh, on layak lists i don't think it's like broken or anything like that um you, you know what both of these decks are doing their own game plan so i understand like possibly while they're not playing garland but i think garland is just like one of the best ice cards and so i am surprised that neither list was playing garland um but you know possibly uh, it doesn't discard enough for nathan to be playing it and for chris Niels, it's just certainly not an aggressive card um mm -hmm. so maybe that's the reason but i think like i when i'm building these ice decks i always start with garland it's like put three garlands in your deck put three scale toads and then build from there <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's me. I I love control decks, and those are like some of the huge uh, controly style decks. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting. Our, the top four was very diverse, uh, especially from what we've been seeing with like mono water being everywhere, and not seeing that in top four is refreshing. Yeah, I mean top sixteen deck list says it all, right? What did you expect? The uh, water <laughs> with <laughs> Veritas. Yeah. From, uh, uh, from Linden. Linden, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of interesting decks in this top. Maytag, uh, yeah. Maytag. Oh, okay, Mono Lightning with Veritas. No, outside of the Crystal Cup, uh, we also had the Square Enix uh, Final Fantasy stream that happened, which I was unable to catch any of that, um, but we had some Opus 9 cards revealed. That's okay, it was in Japanese. <laughs> oh, was <it>? okay. <laughs> but thank, thank, uh, thankfully... Uh, Joe Hill was able to translate all of it on the. Well, I think I think they actually did some uh, some, some subtitles. Probably, sub, some I think they usually do like some translation. Okay. But there were some interesting things. Yeah, so I guess before we get to the, some of the cards that were shown, um, how do you guys feel about that? There's going to be 16 full art cards in this set coming up. Now, 16 is a nice number. Uh, does that mean it's all the legends? Or. I would assume so, depending I'm on gonna, how you I'm going to guess so. Uh, I would guess so as well. So does that mean that they don't, they're not, you know, locked into doing full arts for all the old legends then, are they? Like in the future? To kind of keep no. up, or is it just going to be like rest, a special thing? Rest on, easy, yeah. I think. Uh, rest easy, I think this is moving forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying they're like, man, my wallet's going to start sweating. <laughs> well, your wallet's already going to start sweating, bud. Yeah, that's true. Because these full arts are going to be extremely hard to get um think of them like treasures and is it like one per box or like what's the you, there's no guarantee to even get one in a box do, do we know do we have confirmation they, of what the rate is or we like... don't have confirmation of the rate and i doubt that we'll ever get the confirmation rate until we start opening 
Um, like I said, there's no, they're not even guaranteed in a box. Um, I imagine that there's one at least guaranteed in a case, um, but they're supposed to be extremely rare. Interesting. Um, so for me, who I like to collect a uh, place out of everything foil, this will be tough. I'm still excited though. It's like whatever. If I don't get it, I don't get it, right? But I'd like you to say that my... now until you look at them. You're like, nah, I need these. <laughs> nah, man. I felt that already for a lot, like months now since A zero two. I'm just like, fuck it. <laughs> like, not gonna. Yeah. Yeah, so I've just I've I've given up on I, I I haven't cared for months now. It's just been whatever. I just like in collecting and like I'm more focused on playing now. Um, so I wonder, like A zero two just crushed my dreams. <laughs> so so I wonder will the now? full arts also come non foil? Ah, uh, the the full arts do not come non foil. I don't believe, and that's a good thing, right? Yeah, it's a very good you, thing. Yeah. If you open a non full art, it's just feel uh, feel bad. <laughs> Like, this is cool, but this is literally waiting. This is something that's really rare, and yet I'm waiting to replace it with something better. So, right. <laughs> I'm yeah. yeah, I'm glad that they're just going to be foil. At least I hope that they're just going to be foil. Yeah, because I, I, I cool. collect three of everything. So, like, I would want three with the border, three without the border, three foil, full art, and then three non foil. <laughs> yep. I mean, I'm still struggling. Like, I, I don't even have any foil Ishtolas yet, and I still want those plus the, the Chinese full art. Ishtolas. Oh, you only have regular foil Ishtolas? I don't have any foil Ishtola at all. Jesus. Yeah. Just don't play any Windex, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a whole yeah. one? No, that's Earth. Uh, no, but outside of that, they said that bands are being considered after the release of Opus 9, um, though that there are no inclinations as to what they would be. What, do you, what are your guys' thoughts on that? So, so I, think... I think that bands are going to be, as, as the sets are released, they'll update mm -hmm. a band list. So as Opus 9 drops, there'll be a new band list, possibly with no changes. Yeah, Not right. guaranteed there's no going to be I think they mean there's right. going to be an announcement every set now. Yes. Kind of like how Magic does right. it, where like the week after a set drops, they do the new... Which is excellent. Yeah. Um, and in fact, it, it, you almost want them not to ban anything the first time, so people don't expect there to be a band every set. Because if there's a ban every set, then we'll just continue on thinking that there's going to, you know, like if we have a ban the very first set, people will just assume that it's going to be a ban every set. Um, and that would be probably bad, but I'm not even guaranteed. Like, let's say, like, what if bans, and, and here's what, here's my problem. People keep looking at bans as, like, the perception of they have to ban cards that are broken and broken only. That is not true, right? Like, think about the way magic works, right? Every six months to a year, there's a ban of 500 plus cards, right? Those cards <laughs> rotated out. Um, so quite literally, like they're keeping their format fresh. I'm not saying I want rotation. I don't. I enjoy that my cards are maintaining their value, um, and that I don't have to worry about different formats when the game isn't that big to where I have to worry about. Some people are split between legacy and modern. It's it's sometimes you don't see legacy fire at our local events. Sometimes you do. Sometimes they have a great number. Sometimes they have zero people. I don't want that for Final Fantasy where the events are split. But if you just instead look at it as sometimes cards will be broken, sometimes they will be meta-defining and they will warp the format. Like Dataluma. Like, I love that card. And if they were to ban it for reasons of wanting to switch the meta up, I would 100% get behind it. And it would open up a lot of cool deck and deck space design Um and I'd be all for it. If they banned something like Cognazzo, if they, um, I don't know, Al Cid would be another good example. These are cards that they could ban that aren't broken, but just switch up your deck design, your deck building space. And they could just have, an, if they really want another format, you can have an unrestricted list or whatever. But point being that, like, you don't have to ban a card just because it's broken. You can make changes to a format for the overall health of the format. It's okay to ban cards like Jesper and Thaumaturge even though they're not showing up in every list just because they're unhealthy. And I'm not saying like Dataloom is at that level. It's certainly not. But look as a, at a ban. It, it, at least open your eyes to the possibility that a ban could just be for health reasons. It doesn't necessarily have to be some extravagant thing, right? Like, Yeah, I feel like right. a lot of people view bans as kind of like the pitchforks coming out. Like we have to go after this evil thing that's menacing us where that just may not be the case well in a lot of other tcgs like magic like that's where it gets to the point right like 
think about how many, I don't know if you've played during rally, but I don't know how many games in a row I won <laughs> during rally where it's just like, I when are they going to ban this card? It's just, it's a fun deck for <laughs> it's you. Like, it's so fun. It's fun for you while you're playing it, right? So um, just for reference, rally, you pay X uh, in addition to the base cost of the card. You bring back all of your guys and your, well, in the, like, that game it's a graveyard, but basically your break zone, bring them all to the field of that cost or less. And that was always a very and high that's number. that's it. <laughs> you <laughs> so brought you back a like, lot of guys. I drew a lot of cards. I brought back Rally itself to your hand. It was... Yeah. It was, <laughs> it, was it temporary for that turn, or was it... Uh, did they stay? I, I actually just don't remember. But it doesn't... The, the yeah, point being is like that, that. <laughs> the format wasn't fun, right? Like, you just played Rally. Similar to back when you played Jace's Mind Sculptor, or you played the wrong deck. Like, Jace is very, very good. Maybe even broken, but... Jace actually, I don't even think Jace was broken. It just was meta defining. It was so format defining that like it was just obviously the best choice. Period. You played you played Stoneforge, uh, the Squadron Hawk and Jace, and it was just nuts. Um, but similar in Final Fantasy, if they were to ban something like Simi Lafina, I think that would be fine. Like the card, in other words, the card's nowhere near busted. Right? We could all say that the card's not busted. And if they banned it, it would completely change up deck space, um, which would be interesting. Also, by the way, I predicted there would be a ban in Opus 9, right? Uh, so You'd have to track uh, that one down, I don't know. So I'd be happy if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, even when Thaumaturge was banned, like since I was playing Ice, it was basically just freeing up slots that weren't like... Like before, when you'd build an Ice deck, you had to play three Thaumaturge whether you were playing mid-range or turbo. Or, like, even if you build, like, a control -y version, like, right. why would you not just play a blocker that also discards, right? No, yeah. So it definitely opens up, um, like, deck space, like you were saying. Uh, and then outside of that, um, they said there will be a new keyword, uh, starting with Opus 10. So not in Opus 9, but in Opus 10. Um, and it was one that is not in Chapters, correct? Yes, yeah. it's a brand new mechanic, so it's not going to be, like, Link... Or, I'm so excited that by that because I don't have to hear people predicting what it is. Well, they still will, but I don't have to. Yes, it's just going to be much better, in my opinion. I'm just happy. Right. I'm not nervous at all. They'll 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 they'll, they'll knock it out of the park. I'm pretty sure. Uh, and then a couple more things here. Uh, they said that multi-element cards are possible. Oh shit! And Final Fantasy has banding. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but <laughs> Zach, did you realize that? Yeah. Final Fantasy has banding. It's the worst mechanic in Magic, but it works so incredibly in Final Fantasy. Banding is uh, party attacking, and but in like Magic, it's just terrible. Oh, okay. But the, the, uh, anyway. the two creatures had to have the ability to attack together too. Like it wasn't even like a just a base thing you could do. In fact, in yeah, Magic, yeah. it's reversed. You can actually double, triple, quadruple, whatever block instead of attack. right. So it's completely right. different. Right. Right. Anyway. Can... You can party block, okay. Yeah. Oh, That's... yeah, and, and oftentimes you need to, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so uh, back to what we were talking about, uh, multicolor cards. Uh, Zach, what are your thoughts on possible multicolor cards coming to Final Fantasy? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> uh, definitely <laughs> excited. I mean, some of my favorite cards are things like Zezat, Gilgamesh, the Opus 3 Gilgamesh, the Moogle package, like just any abusive, super greedy multicolor combination thing. I love those kind of decks, so... I'd be very curious to see, like, cards like the Laswell that came out, that's not a strictly dual-color card, but in order to get all of the value out of it, you know, it pushes you towards Ice Fire. Or, like, mm -hmm. Krill pushes you towards at least having access to Fire and or uh, Lightning CP, uh, the original Krill. So I like those kind of cards that, like, yeah, there's an obvious deck-building direction in terms of what colors you need, but it gives you a ton of interesting play space. And... Yeah. Yeah. Between a direction and, you know, having more options, it's really cool. And then it'll be interesting, though, to see the impact of if it's in the cost, that's going to make your backups really picky. Or you have to, like, so if, say a card is uh, Lightning Earth and it's a four cost. You have to either pay a Lightning Ditch and Earth, pay an Earth Ditch a Lightning, or have, like, exactly an earth and a lightning backup and then have some other element to pitch so the combinations get a lot more intricate for how you have to weave your cards together so it'll, i'll be curious to see if that increases or what it does to the power level of the cards 
I think it's a cool design space to be entering into, and it's kind of exciting. So they're they're hybrid, as in like, because you know in Magic there's 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 dual colors, yeah, yeah. and then there's hybrid. Oh, it's or. I, I mean, I don't know if it is or not. Oh, no, okay. no, I'm saying, are they? Like, do we know? Is it like you I, could pay? I was imagining. I'm hoping it's dual color. Yeah, where it's like you have to have one of each, and then. Right. Yeah. yeah. But hybrid would also be interesting. Like, if you had a card that, like, broke a monster and you could play water for it or lightning for it, you give both options to break monsters. Right, right. Um, so you're able to address some meta concerns this way. Um, I don't know. Like, like let's say Archangel got out of hand. I don't think that's ever going to be the case. But let's say Archangel got out of the hand. Like, um, you could have a card that's both wind and lightning that says that, like, Forge can only deal one damage per turn. Like it would just be interesting. Sure, yeah. I ho- I hope it's not that way, but it would also still it would still be cool. I- I'll be excited either way, but yeah, I think dual color where they have to be paid with both um, would be cooler. So didn't they reveal a like a Sarah or a Snow and a Lightning card from yeah. at the at the fan fest? That, that was mm-hmm. a chapters card. There, yeah, there it was a chapters a card that could appear in the future. And those weren't dual color though. The chapters yeah, cards were names. one color that just had dual. Like you, it was both Renoa and Squall or whatever. So if a card oh, referenced uh, one, it could reference that card. So if it said like uh, the Renoas get plus one thousand, sure, it would also get plus one thousand. Yeah, even card, though card named Snow is protected by Sarah, so that card would be protected even though it's also Lightning. Okay. 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 Correct. Interesting. Um, okay. Um, so then we had a few spoilers uh, that were shown. Uh, we also had the Fire Legend that was revealed at the... That was at the Water Crystal Cup, correct? Gale? Yeah. I don't actually have that mm-hmm. one pulled up, but yeah, yeah, that one. The six drop? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to find the actual picture. Someone posted I will, all of them earlier. I, I, I will bet that Zach plays that card. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think it'll be good, actually. I know everyone's hating on it, but I think Zach will play the card and it will be good. I, yeah, I don't know why people be hitting on. Anytime you give me on the on demand access to breaking my own backups, that enables a lot of broken things. Maybe not. <laughs> well, I, was imag- I was imagining you playing it in a deck with no backups. So, well, that that too. Yes. <laughs> they're, they're, see, that's the thing. You go both ways. Either a deck like that's super right. skewed towards a lot of backups, or a deck that wants no backups, which is right. a very if, interesting. If, if, reason. if you're always hitting forwards with that thing, like then it's a two CP night game. And it's ways to play your Saban, ways to play your VV. So, all right, Sam. So, what do you think of the new? Uh, I guess it's called Maya or Mia. What are your holy, thoughts on that? Holy card? boobs! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a legend too. I, I didn't realize that. It's, I, yeah, it's I have cards. nothing but positive things for that card. Um, full art. <laughs> and in full art, yeah. Full art boobs. Uh, yep. Um, Man, we're so gonna put like a little disclaimer a... on this podcast, Sam. Nah, <laughs> having ha- having um, a card, another wall type card, is really cool. Um, ironically, it makes me I I have some walls that I was hanging on to um, that I decided to sell, but then I'm like, well, should I sell it? If m- it, it works both ways, right? Like if Mobius is getting support, like they could reprint a wall, and then like I'm like glad I sold it. But also, if Mobius is getting support, they don't reprint wall. Wall could go much higher. So. It's already like it's a real risk. Like it's definitely riskier to sell than it is to hold on to, because the card's just good. So like at worst, you still have a great card. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like that card by itself. Be like in lightning. Um, at first, I thought it was when it enters, and I was like, "This card's a legend." You've got to be kidding me. This is terrible. <laughs> but the fact that it's every turn, including including the fact that it can give itself haste. Like oh it's other than her never mind you can't give herself haste ooh that makes it worse a lot worse <clears throat> still pretty good <laughs> three sixty cards bad no <laughs> no I can't I, I I didn't know that you couldn't give herself haste but you give wall haste you can, you can give herself plus one k first strike though sure but that's not good if it's not attack I guess not the first strike <laughs> but yeah not the first strike but the dull the dull part like every turn like takes out a blocker every turn and she's on curve is pretty good. Um, it's not something like Amon where like, or where like you have to dole it to use this ability every turn or like lightning where it happens just the first turn it comes in. 
um, or even the five drop lightning where it's when it comes in and when it attacks, but you have to meet this other requirement. Um, this one can do one no matter what, and then can do a second one whenever it takes uh, an amount of damage. I really think that the choose one forward part is like the, the dull is like really, really good. And then the choose one forward. That's probably the default turn. one, right? Like kind of like wall yeah, a lot yeah, of the yeah. time is like, all right, something's going to be brave or for or sure. In certain matchups, yeah. you're always picking EX burst. Like I think and the then, dull is going to be dull and then maybe buff one of my guys. And then the first strike is pretty good too. I mean, this yeah. card with wall side by side is obviously the dream. It's just, that's actually just insane. Like you're winning every combat step. She's also a witch, which is relevant. Right, for Cypher, for sure. For um, Cypher, for Adia, you can Adia, just go grab back, her yeah. out of nowhere. Well, Adia grabs her from the break zone, but yes. Is it uh, break yeah. zone? Okay. Yeah, Adia can grab her from the break zone. Cypher can grab her from anywhere. Um, certainly cool cards to think about. Um, yeah, I, I like this card quite a bit. I don't know if I see myself playing it, though, Is if that's interesting enough. If I play, it's because of the art. <laughs> her and her and full art Illua side by side. No, no, you're not gonna play Illua. I mean, I have full art Illua's, but <laughs> I played. Listen, I played Illua's for the last th four, last three of the last four weeks. I only played Earthwind last week. The week before, I was just playing all kinds of Illua decks and winning quite a bit. That card is not. That card's not even fun to play. <laughs> I'm not gonna get started. Uh, what else? Uh, Quistis. Why are yeah, people Quistis. saying Quistis is good? Uh, I mean, her S ability is pretty bonkers. I I will say, like, obviously, okay. When we are examining these cards in vacuums, right now we do not have. Oh, yeah, her S ability is great. We do <laughs> not have enough. But she's a four CP seven K. Like, no, thank you. Well, she's a. Two CP seven. Well, four. No, 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 no. no. You four. have to hit. You have to hit. And what eight fours are good right now? You have Renoa and possibly a Return of Squall. And that's being really optimistic. We have well, to decide what's in the set. Here, let me let me go see what we have currently. Obviously. Okay, no. maybe you have Cipher. If we're also playing a Witch deck, we're playing Ice Lightning. Well, I mean, we're uh, playing no. Fusoya. We're playing Fusoya of some kind. Right. Look, it is you an have EX burst. This, I, I, have... I, I will say that I honestly didn't realize it was an EX burst, um, which helps it a little bit. I'm not willing to pay an extra CP for an EX burst almost ever. Um, Does she only grab forwards? Yep. She That's the problem. She only grabs forwards. And I don't think that there's that many backups that it would have been broken to make her include backups. See, I think like, I could see her grabbing Ultimate. She is interesting. Yeah, Cypher. Adia. Uh, the Bounce for Noah. Yep, Adia. Yeah, but they're, even, they're, even Adia is pretty bad, though, because she'd be in a deck that doesn't have all lightning backups, presumably. So, I'll say this, too, though, is that they said that they don't design cards with title... Oh, maybe they, they said that they Zell. used to not design title... Uh, uh, design cards with title in mind. Um, this card does seem nuts in title. Like, nuts. And 8 is already probably, like, A tier, maybe A plus tier in title. Um, so... Yeah, maybe if they were to even have kind of like, for example, they say they say like even if a card doesn't seem strong enough, this is what um, what uh, they said during I think it was during fanfare, right? Um, they said that if when they're designing a card, if it doesn't seem strong enough, they'll consider it as an implication in other formats like title, and they'll give it like a boost to help. So, for example, maybe this card doesn't seem that strong. So, well, in title, it pumping other cadets um could be really relevant so we'll add that to that hmm. i mean it changing you know that is really though if you could set that up like consistently which you probably can't but man oh man does that a, a powerful effect oh well it's interesting that it, it's a way to break four drops for ice that's probably really relevant um and people won't realize how important yeah, that it is. doesn't say break dull forwards it doesn't say at the end of like whatever turn break forwards it's just right like, right then like, break all of them one-sided oh and by the way draw that card and it's, it's a great way for ice to, like i'm sure like if cody's playing this it's a it's a great way for him to kill data um so like this is ice's really good way of dealing with data luma and that it doesn't target <laughs> it it kills everything Cody Besides that, like when you kill Dadaluma, you're also killing their wall, right? Like you're also killing other problematic cards. 
Um, so I, but I just, but people are saying this card is nuts. Is what I've heard, and I'm like, I, I don't think it's good. Yeah, I don't think it's nuts. I think it'd be a fun build around though. Yeah, I think it'll... like I'll build a Yule deck, Yule Vanille, Earth Ice Fusoya nonsense with this card probably, just to try it. Don't you are that isn't that deck already like full though? Fine room. <laughs> right, sure. I'm, I'm not gonna argue. I don't think the card's bad, and I don't. We don't have the set, so I will be honest and say, yeah, we don't have the set. I don't know. Maybe there's a bunch of forwards, but they're gonna have to add like a busted Laguna or something. Wait, so Cody, what's your uh, what's your take on it? I saw you shaking your head when you were saying, you know, maybe a good way to deal with Dataluma. There's no good way to deal with that Aluma and Ice. So <laughs> that one's not bad. Yeah. Let, hey, let, let's, let's move on to Heretical Knight Garland because this card is sweet, right? Yeah. Like this card's sweet. The fact that it's second ability, you can do twice. It's just nuts to me. Like one sided Wrath of ending. Gods. Yeah, that's... yeah. One sided Wrath of Gods are just insane. Like he's a five eight, which some people would say is not great, but like typically he's not right because he's right, be yeah. reduced. You you kill something, you can do it in damage. There's 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 night. There's so much night nice support. There's night pumpers. There's night searchers. Oh, true. Um, he's a knight. Oh goodness. All right. Yeah. yeah. This is a Mobius card. We're getting Mobius support. Um, you know this card next to the big booby chick with wall. <laughs> like there's all kinds of like good stuff that could, could be happening. Uh, I I love this card. This is a build around card for me, and and the build around is play this card, untap. <laughs> <laughs> throw your hand away when the game wait so yeah what's uh six cp so you need 12 cp to wipe the board presumably so it'd be unless you have like that little things to paint and go with it or something but so it'd be yeah. what four off backups and then one from you hand, need 12 and or three. technically so you need four you cards had... in hand and five backups or four backups yeah although technically i mean you have to kill something to make this cheaper but you can use that ability um whenever he first comes in if you give him haste like yeah. And there's a lightning card and Mobius that gives him haste. I'm not saying that that's cheap or realistic necessarily, but I mean, even giving it first strike means that that six thousand is going to put away anything. So, yeah, this card seems very good to me. Yeah, I like it. Um, one thing I was wondering: uh, if two of your forwards uh, were put from the field in the break zone, does this card become no. free? No, it does not. No, it, no, it's okay. just looking for an instance of if if this happened. It's just okay. It doesn't care how it doesn't care how many times it happened, which is ironic. Is it's not like the second ability. The second ability stacks because it gains multiple instances of that, um, just as if it was like Terra gaining ma multiple instances of Magic Charge. Well, that's yeah, like, I'm actually. Uh... Oh, sorry. No, I'm, I'm just reading through the comments now, seeing that that is you're correct on that, Sam. <laughs> uh, where where's the where's it posted? At? I haven't seen it. Uh, uh, this I'm on is, the fans page. I'm on Joe Hill's post to the fans page. Which shout out to him for translating all this, or at yeah. least posting it up for everybody to see. At least, at least doing the hard work for us. Yeah, because I'm yeah. totally reading everything off of his post. So. Yeah. Then they, uh, what about the, we gotta give some love to the flyer backup, right? The uh, double auto ability thing. I swear to God, I didn't read it. <laughs> what is it? All right, so <laughs> it's a when, fire backup. When Fusilier enters the field, you may pay fire. When you do so, choose one forward. Deal a 5k damage. So what it does is you have an auto ability where you choose to pay or not kind of like the opus three kuja and then yeah. when you do pay it creates a second stack uh, right which, which is, is how the new vengeance is going to work also yeah which is interesting to me um that they're right. going to start and i guess there's some kind of moving forward they're gonna correct do i don't think that i don't think that they're going to retroactively change the old cards like what, what would uh, be an example of that would that be like kuja it'd be like you may pay this if you do so well what about like what about like game? um Choose a guy. What about like Mion? Mion's an example. Yagrat. Uh, but those Mion's an example, right? Those aren't like uh, different costs. Though you're not choosing to pay a cost or not a resolution. You're choosing whether or not to bounce. But they would things. create. I'm saying that they would. Well, that is a. Well, depends on how you looked at it, I guess. I, I think there's a nuance there. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I'm saying that like it doesn't. It potentially Mion in the future, if they would, if they printed it now, it could, could say something like when Mion enters the field. You may return a um, character you control to your hand. When you do so, choose one, uh, draw draw one card, and so oh, that would sure, sure. it yep. would create so they can a respond to the draw. Instance. Yeah, correct. Whereas right now they cannot respond. Okay. Um, right. So interesting. So can you pay this effect multiple times? No. No. Okay. No. So still just, just one instance. Okay. So in, in the field. 
Oh my god, cards. if you could pay more than once. Whoo! Yeah. <laughs> so, 10k for four. Oh yeah. This might be the best fire backup in the game. <laughs> hey, it's still yeah, actually not that bad though. Like turn yeah, one, pretty... it's just a two drop. But like Does... turns after that, you can do more. So yeah, it's interesting because like Ir Ir Irvine um, is not a multiple unit card. Uh, you know, it's unique. And so it does one more point of damage. But this one, you can actually just play on turn one um, and choose not to play that extra. Um, so it's interesting. It does do one less thousand point of damage is my point. Um, it's going to be you're relevant, looking, but it, it, that's it, the it price you pay be. for flexibility. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's a good point. To, yeah, that's a good point. But I think that in most cases, I would play the Irvine over this. Yeah. Um, but this is another Tactics 2 backup, which they have a lot, though, right? They have a lot. Yeah, I can't imagine oh. if it was a Moogle instead of a standard uh, unit. <laughs> I, when, they, when they start spoiling the Moogles, I'll, I'll start to get excited. Right. That, that's when I'll get excited. <laughs> Show me the Moogles. That, that's the last spoiler, correct? Yep. That's, I think that's the yeah. last one we have access to at the moment, yeah. Oh, outside of Vincent, which I guess we could talk about. <laughs> Ooh, that Vincent. <laughs> I actually it's interesting. I remember off the top of my head what it does, though. I know, like, generally, but I don't remember the wording. Um, it, it, it deals uh, damage to... It does, like, 8,000 to a dual forward. Is that correct? I believe so. That sounds about right. I'm trying to pull it up now. It's another one of the auto abilities that creates a separate auto ability. Like a separate stack? Yeah, and it also, I, I'm trying to remember what the special is, but the special itself is also pretty good, if I recall. Um, particularly if you're know, playing like, like a... bust up backups, I just don't remember. Yeah, Plus. like if you're playing like a, a deck like Ian's, um, I think that, that that card could be pretty good. It's a 3CP uh, 7K. Um, when it enters the field, you put one backup, you control into the break zone, you may. If you do so, then you can uh, choose a dual four deal eight thousand. So like in oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, like cool. in um, Ian's deck, like breaking your own backups or breaking your own lightning fasoya, um, pretty good. Breaking your own Jito stuff like that, pretty good. Breaking and then um, it also hecaton cheers um, for a special for Earth. Earth. Yeah, so you could presumably oh, yeah. kill one of their guys, break your fasoya, get the special back, and then be able to special the following turn. And if they deal with him, then you just play another copy of him and do it all over again correct yeah he's interesting he's i might even say he's good i think he's good <laughs> i might even say he's. i good. think that like if you phoenix this guy in and you just deal two oh, guys yeah. eight thousand damage it's like oh and you got a forward it just makes phoenix way better and you got to clear uh, out your agito or whatever it is you want to yeah. replay that game yeah 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 i'm a fan of this guy he's cool he's got my my uh my nod. Uh, also, happy birthday, Matthew Rice. For real? Yeah. Yeah, his real, <laughs> real birthday. Supposedly. I, I thought I thought so, we weren't supposed to wish him a happy birthday on his real birthday, though. Well, it won't be by the time this video comes out. That's true. Oof. And so I have I mean, a question for you guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thought yeah. I've been having. Uh, it started by when people saw the results for the... Water Crystal Cup in the UK. Uh, JFB's list having the 15 backups. And uh, I was talking to people that saying, oh, well, it's just a JFB deck. It's a JFB deck. And like, okay, well, what does that mean? Do you guys believe that there are certain play styles that other players just will never be able to catch up with? That may be a poor way to word it, but like, uh, we have two types of players I'm talking to right now, right? Sam, you, you play a million different decks, almost a different deck every week. You brew all the time. You try to make up these like complicated synergies and combos, and but then Cody, you kind of You're calling Cody a basic bitch. We're getting there. I think I, I think that's what we're getting. <laughs> but well, then Cody, I think Cody is quoted on a previous cast of saying, "I don't play those big brain decks." I think he said those words. <laughs> so, but Cody, you like to play the same deck, and you like to master that one kind of well, niche, I... and like you become kind of the expert in that field, right? For the most part. I did... I just don't play monsters that aren't named for long. <laughs> okay. But... After that, it gets complicated. Or so. decks without ice. Yeah, like Cal Brina. I, I, yeah, I, I just don't play that card. That card's just... <laughs> but... That's a tough read. <laughs> it's a but tough anyway, read. So people definitely, you know, they tend towards certain decks. But do you think there's a, kind of a cap of an individual skill level in a certain archetype? Like, I'm really bad at playing aggro decks typically. But you can make an argument that if I put months and months into it, maybe I'll be as good as, like, the best aggro player. 
there's like, a there's a skill cap into what you enjoy. Like you can't force yourself to enjoy something. And so JFB is gonna like his style of deck, um, and that's gonna help him do better with that style of deck. I like monsters, um, and I tend to do well with monsters. Uh, Cody likes these this ice style mid range decks or the wind water mid range decks, and so he's gonna do better with the decks that he enjoys. Um, do you think it's certainly... the enjoyment factor then, not necessarily the play style of the deck? It's, it's how much you enjoy that Absolutely. play style. Okay. I think that if you are playing a deck that you thoroughly enjoy, you're going to do a lot better. Um, it's part of the reason I just stopped playing water. Like when I was playing water at first, I actually enjoyed it and I was doing very, very well and I loved it. Um, I just don't do well with water anymore. I, I, I just can't even find myself caring enough when I play it. Like I just, it's not fun to me. And that, you know, no offense to anyone who does love it, uh, Zayim. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that, I don't think that it's not that we're not going to, like, because I think everybody can be up. taught if, to learn a deck, right? But, they just won't be as good initially if it's not something they're normally they're used to or comfortable with. I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I it's hard for me to tell. Whenever I play like Bailey's Mono Fire deck, I feel like the deck's just broken. Like, how do you ever lose? Like, I just <laughs> run over people. And, and similar, um, when I I played Serena's uh, Lightning Water deck, very similar similar to what Jordan, uh, Jonathan Gordon played the other night, and like I was just on a rampage. Like that that could just seem so nuts to me. But, like, if I were to play in a big event, I think that I would do very poorly because I don't think I'd be enjoying myself. And you have to play that deck eight rounds, and you have to have confidence in it. And if you had confidence in it, wouldn't you have enjoyed it? I mean... Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just feel like... I don't think it's the case that, like, you're not going to be able to catch up. If, if you find a new deck and you don't do well with it, but you enjoy that type of archetype, I think you will learn how to play it much quicker... And more proficiently than if you are forcing yourself to play a deck you don't like. That's fair. Now, Cody, what are your kind of general thoughts of? I didn't phrase the question perfectly, but I think you generally get the idea I'm trying to go for. Yeah, can I get? Sorry, I'm trying to focus on what Sam was saying. Can you repeat <laughs> the question if you don't mind? Basically, do you believe that a a player's capacity to play a certain deck can be capped out? based on archetype or do you think it's capped out in another way like sam was saying where it's like by enjoyment or how much time you spend on it like i don't think if i spent a month with a control deck versus a month with an aggro deck i think i'll be infinitely better with a control deck even if it's a worse deck in the meta just because that's what i like to play but well how do you you feel about that kind of statement i think yeah i think kind of like going off both of what you guys have said I think if you don't enjoy a deck, you're not going to become, like, as optimal with that deck. Uh, for instance, like, Earth Wind, Like, I can play it. Or, like, how Sam plays Water, and he's good with it, but, like, he doesn't enjoy it. Like, I can win games with Earth Wind, but I'm just not having fun playing it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to want to continue to play it for, like, test it online, take it to locals, take it to big tournaments. Whereas, like, Ice or Wind Water, I like those decks. Um, they're more my style, like the mid-range. Um so obviously I can become optimal with those. I think that's a bad example though. I think that the example of like monsters and ice and ice for Cody is a better example. Whereas like 15 backups is really just a factor of the fact that JFB caught on to something that we should have caught on a long time ago. Um, and that backup searching backups, for example, um, just makes you your need for backups much lower Mm -hmm. you know i think that we probably took a percentage i don't know if the math lines up perfectly but if you looked at something like magic where you draw one card a a turn and you need to play a land every turn um and you do mathematics and you probably did similar mathematics and you came to the mathematical perfect uh hit five backups on turn five is to play 17 or something like that um but perhaps you didn't factor in that you'd always draw in two per turn and that you have backups and search up backups I think that JFB just clued in on something a lot earlier than most people. Um, hats off to him. Um, I don't think that everyone should play that, even that deck that way. That's I what I mean. That. So, like, you would give people advice, like, don't necessarily play that deck. It's like, well, why? Because JFB is better than you are. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> and that's J- where I'm J- coming in with the capacity can, to learn. Things. He can plan around those types of things. And if he gets backup stuck, for example, okay, let, let's look at like a turn one. A turn one backup, right? So you end the turn. So you you on the plate. You go to six cards. 
you play turn one back up, you go to four cards, you've net minus uh, four CP, I guess, but you've you've gained a backup, for example, right? Um, in Zidane's, or I mean, in, in JFB's list, you play, what if you were to play Zidane turn one, right? And then you play Mion, uh, so you end up with the same amount of backups, but you spent an extra CP, um, but you also dug your your deck one card deeper and you took a CP out of their hand. So your CP advantage was the same and possibly card selection is increased. Plus you've also set up a turn two Zidane for an actual three CP cost. Um, so you end at the same amount of CP cost. Um, but point being that like, I don't think everyone can do that. Um, because you need to know when it's right to play the Zidane turn one, even for example, and you need to also like know which card to take and it might not have even been the best play. Um, I, I just think that JFB is a stronger player. He's played, he plays a lot and he's had a lot of practice with this particular archetype. I don't think that it's a JFB thing to have 15 backups. And if the opposite, if, if JFB were to run like Ian's deck, he might, instead of running 15 backups, like he's running now, and Ian, who's running, like, 21 backups, JFB might run 26 because he figures that, like, that's the right number because of these types of interactions. Um, so I don't think... I guess what I'm trying to say is that the 15 backups itself is not a JFB thing. Um, he's just the man... I'm just using that as the example now because that's, okay. that's where this all sparked up from. Okay, so, yeah, I don't, think, I don't think that that is a JFB thing at all. I think it's just he's smarter than us and figured it out sooner. Yeah, because people are saying, like, oh, well, don't play the deck because only JFB can play it. Or, like, well, of course, no. he did well with it only having this many backups because it was him playing. I'm like, I don't necessarily think it's that. <laughs> no, if, I think if you were to play the deck, you should run, like, 16 backups. Um, and that if someone who is brand new to the deck plays it, they should run the 18 version, the 18 backup version. You know? And as you become more comfortable lower and lower and lower you know and if and if if we were to get mastery like jfb has gotten then i think we could lower it down to 15 it, it might be 14 you know it, it might be that when jfb gets much better the deck if he hasn't moved on that the correct number is 14 and it might be that the because the backups change that the correct number is actually 16 we don't know if that makes sense yeah no it's definitely, definitely an interesting topic and i know we've seen Oh, We've seen like Greg Cole ran like uh, 15 backups in his Scions to Correct. great success um, at both Crystal Cups so far this year. Maybe maybe that's the key. You, once you can get down to playing 15 backups in your deck, you're at the height of that <laughs> archetype's mastery. Well, you also <laughs> have. I'm just saying, you also have uh, 35 other slots. Yeah. Um, compared to people who normally only have 33 other slots, so yeah. you get right. two extra slots, which is pretty relevant. Particularly when you're digging through your deck with a card like Mion. Mm -hmm. So, definitely interesting. Uh, but yeah, I think that about wraps us up for this week, guys. Once again, we are the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And we'll see you next week. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Choker Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out cardivalice.com and use promo code CHOKERBROS to get 10% off your next order.